Hello everyone. Welcome to my class, Electric Components, Part 2. The agenda for today's class is electric circuit components, mostly focus on capacitive and inductive values. Uh, and then we will compare the resistors, capacitors, and inductors in terms of their uh, values and characteristics. On top of that, their uses and applications. In our previous class, we have discussed about uh, registers. Today, focus more on capacitors. This is their ap appearance, and this is the uh, circuit symbol. Okay. And then uh, another two is diode and LED light emitting diode they are kind of capacitors so we'll discuss after capacitor that too capacitors there are two types uh, one the normal capacitor non-polarized another one is for low capacitive values and small small electronics device uh, to build use this Whereas for high capacity values, um, uh, high used for high capacity need, that one is polarized and the symbol is like this. Okay. Diodes and lead, light emitting diodes, both are polarized capacitors. They have anode and cathode marked with positive and negative signs. Next, inductor. And then, uh, the other components which we need to build the circuit, like transistors, this is on uh, active device, active component. I see also sometimes active, battery, all are active, then conductors, cables, their symbols, and insulators. Insulators are used to insulate the conductors. Okay. Now, let us focus on capacitors. So this is a two lead components. As usual, we can see two hand. This is their appearance. This is their schematic symbol. Uh, here to mention the usual or normal capacitors, their two hands or two leads are equal. They are either written the value or the code. Through that, we can measure their value. But for polarized capacitors, they have one lead longer and one is smaller okay or sometimes in symbol we can make it positive and negative we can write positive and negative to indicate that usually the positive uh, lead is the longer one the negative is the shorter one okay um, capacitors are used to To store the electrical charges, their unit is farad. Usually, the value is very low, is in terms of nanofarad or picofarad. But microfarad also can be used. Microfarad is usually for um, unpolarized unpolar capacitors for high capacity values. Okay, we can read uh, usually for. Um, polarized capacitor the value is written or printed on its body while the disk capacitor or the non-polarized one sometimes the value is written but uh, mostly they are code through the code we can determine their value of capacitance okay so the use of capacitors to block the direct current okay dc and allowing the AC current to pass, usually used for household appliances, where the power is coming either DC or AC from the generator, and then it's allow only the AC currents to go to the appliances for uses. It also used in the filter networks to smooth the output power supplies. <coughs> So this is the plate capacitors. We can charge or store energy here uh, through the 
voltage of power source. So one plate can be charged as positive and another negative, equal amount of charges Q. Usually they are equilibrium because both positive and negative charge are in equal. So the capacitance of a, a capacitor, this is the characteristic, how much charge it can store uh, can be defined as C equals Q over V. So uh, same like triangular um, formula, we can use QCV, eh? Q equals CV. So C capacitance equals Q by V. Okay. So what is the capacitance? Uh, the charge can be plus or minus. V is the voltage difference. So this one, the rate of change of charge per unit volt or potential difference. So C can be written as dQ, dV. Means after integration, it can be Q by V for a fixed voltage. And how much the work done um, can be uh, measured for a specific potential difference and with a uh, variation of the charges. That one is W. Or the, this one, the energy, okay, electrical energy E. So this one Q equals zero to W, V, DQ. Okay, how the charge is changing is this coming. Yeah, and then V means Q by uh, Q by C. If we put that, so C is constant capacitance. It's a constant value for a specific capacitor. So this one can be Q square by two after integration. Okay. So uh, since Q square by two, it can be written Q means CV CV square, okay. or VQ. There are variation of the formula, three variations. Okay, so Q equals CV and W equals half CV square or half VQ or Q square by C. Okay. So non-polarized or fixed capacitors are mainly the ceramic capacitors, small in size and small in capacitance value. Okay, the symbol is like that, whereas the polarized is axial lead or radial lead, one hand longer, one is shorter, and the symbol can be like this. This is common type of capacitors, uh, the pol non-polarized one, and this can be connected in a circuit in both directions. Okay, there's no need to worry. And it can be used for both AC and DC current. The working voltage uh, written on case, but there is a number coding from where we can determine the values. Whereas the polarized capacitors are most widely used um, the electrolyte type. And it is used for higher capacitance uh, applications or uses range of microfarads. Since there is one positive and one negative lead, uh, this should be used very carefully to connect in a circuit. Because in case if there is a wrong connection, the circuit will be damaged. Okay. And these uh, polarized capacitors are used only for on DC currents. Its working voltage is written and the value written on the case, no number code is used. So eventually we can replace a polarized capacitor by a non-polarized one in a circuit very easily, but reverse process cannot be done. Means we can't replace non-polarized capacitor with polarized one. There are various types of capacitors available in the market. So uh, metallite polyester film capacitors inside the polyester film is used, okay? And uh, they are symbols. This is the electrolytic capacitors or uh, the polarized capacitor. These are the variable uh, 
trimmer capacitor and tuning capacitor. This is the most widely used thermistor to sense the temperature, okay, temperature dependent register, ceramic capacitors. These are the another one, ceramic capacitors, okay, titanium and polyester film capacitors. Okay, now let us <coughs> discuss how we can measure the value of the capacitance if we know the material flares and the dielectric constants used inside that. Means this is how we can formulate or design for the parallel plate. Okay, the how much the capacitance value, it depends on how much charge is stored in the parallel plate. It can be either positive or negative Q. It depends on the area, surface area of the plate. So it's bigger, capacitance is bigger. If uh, surface area is lower, smaller, uh, the capacitance value will be smaller. So it's directly proportional to the surface area, capacitance value from here we can see. Another one is inversely proportional to the distance between the two material plates, or we can say the thickness of dielectric materials in between the two plates. So that one is D. So D is more, capacitance is less. D is very close, means very value of the distance is less, means the plates are very close to each other, the capacitance value will be more. Another one, this one the constant. This constant, it depends on the dielectric materials. We can say dielectric constant or permittivity value of the dielectric substances. This one, easily we can get from uh, the table already available, like these are the insulator, right? The dielectric material. So they can be vacuum, air, okay, teflon, um, polypropylene, polyester, wool, something like that, wood, glass. So depending on the material, their permittivity value is given here. Vacuum is one, air is very close to one. To most the similar, okay. While for the uh, wood is 3.3, wood maple is 4.4, glass is 4.9 to 7.5, depends on the type of glass used, okay, and so on. So now let us see the reading the value or determining the value of capacitors. So first polarized electrolytic capacitors. You, we can see very clearly from here, this is one of the commercial capacitors. They written 10 mu. So means the capacitance of this capacitor is 10 microfarad. Okay. And another one here is written the value 0 0.47 mu F 100 volt. Means this one, the value of the capacitance is 0 0.47 uh, microfarad, but 100 volt means maximum working voltage is 100 volt. Okay, this is the limit. Cannot be um, over limit the 100 volt, or cannot be used um, more than 100 volts. While the other fixed type capacitors or these capacitors, okay, we use the code written on the capacitor to determine its value. For example, this is even 472K. Okay, and here 100 volt. So this is the type of the capacitor because there are various series. So 472, how we can write? It's like register, first value or first digit is the value. Second digit is also the second uh, figure of value of the capacitance. Third one is multiplier or number of zeros. K is tolerance. So means how much the error contains in the reading of capacitance value. So from here we can say what is the value of this capacitor? 47, 10 to the power 2 or 00, zero whatever we write. K. But always uh, the capacity Citizens value of this capacitor are in picofarad. 
So 4700 picofarad K is tolerant plus minus 10%. And this one is usable for a maximum working voltage 100 volt. So another example, this one or another disk capacitor. Here code is written 104. So first one is the first value. This zero is the second value. Four is the multipliers or number of zeros. K is the tolerance. There are so many tolerance. And maximum working voltage is 150 volt. So we can just write what is the value of this capacitance? The value is 1, 0, 10, 10 to the power 4 picofarad, okay? Or 10 to the power 5, eh? Pico means 10 to the power negative 12, so 10 to the power negative 7 farad, or 0 0.1 into 10 to the power negative 6 farad, or 0 0.1 microfarad. This one, how we can write? Okay, we can just write like this also, no problem. And working voltage is 150 volt, okay? plus minus k is 10, plus minus here 10%. Another example, if on a capacitor, there is written 473k 330 volt. So what will be actual capacitance value? So actual capacitance value, 47 multiplication 10 to the power three. Okay, this one pico Faraday. So 10 to the power three means we can uh, pico and this one three, we can write this one, the nanofarad. Huh? And K is plus minus 10% with working voltage 330 volt. Uh, that's how we can read the value of the capacitors. Now let us discuss the similarity or differences of capacitor with resistors, what we discussed before. So resistors versus capacitors. The symbol is this, circuit symbol or this, or there is another one plus minus mark. And then resistors, voltage, current, relationship is V equals IR. It's Ohm's law. But this is the triangular form of the formula. Capacitor is charge. Instead of current, here is current flow, here is charge. Charge is stored. So the charge, capacitance, and voltage relation Q equals CV. This is the triangular form of the formula. So if we know this one, it's easy for us to memorize. So again, register is denoted by resistance value is R, capacitance is C. So V equals IR, this one, Q equals CV. Or if we want to find out I, to relate with that, I means DQ, DT, rate of change of charge. So if we do dq dt, we will get i, c is constant, dv dt. That's the same. Okay, next, diode. Diode is a capacitor, polarized. That's why it's marked with plus and minus. We have to be very careful to use in a circuit. Okay, so um, values is a range of microfarads because it's the higher capacitive values. So we have to connect very properly in circuit to avoid damage during operation. Used only for DC voltage, just like polarized capacitor, okay? And the longer hand is positive, shorter hand is negative. Always the working voltage is written. The yeah, value is written, so there is no color code. It's just like polarized, okay? Another variation is light emitting diode, LED, is the same. This is the circuit symbol. Only difference is gives the light, okay? So the symbol of the light is here. All the capacitors and the LED or the diode are um, passive components. Now, what is the application of this LED? This one used in the circuit to indicate the presence of voltage or the current flow because it gives light when there is a voltage difference. And LED 
is when connected in a forward bias mode, it usually gives the light. Otherwise, no. So we have to be very careful. Even our multi plug, um, there the switches we on and off. We can see is when it is on, there gives the light because it's used uh, LED. Okay. So again, we have to be very careful to use the LED in reverse bias. It will not light up. Moreover, it can damage the circuit. And the precaution we have to take, the voltage level for LED cannot be more than 5 volt. It should be within that. So there are various types of diodes okay, available in the market. So we can see this polarized means plus and minus, and it's only one way the uh, current can flow. This can flow, okay? And then ginger, this one late, and uh, score, another one, score T diode. Okay. After that, the another component used to build circuit or the network is inductor. So the appearance of inductor is like this. And the circuit symbols are like this. You can see so many variations. Why? Because based on what is in, used inside the inductor. Inductor means the coil. So this one means air. Okay. If there is given some iron core, it's like this. If Powered iron core means it can be powered through the electric current. Okay. And then variable which can be tuned. They are passive element designed to store energy in magnetic domain. The same like capacitor. Capacitor, but capacitor in electric domain store charge. This one stores energy in magnetic field. So mostly, wide, most widely used uh, in electrical appliances such as power supply. For power generation, also this one is used because through the induction of magnetic field. Okay, transformers, radios, TVs, electrical motors. These are the uh, applications of inductor. Okay, so what is the induction? Induction is the property of an inductor, how much it can uh, means store the energy. Okay. So the induction is denoted by yeah. L, the unit of L is Farad <coughs> by Farad law. Okay. Another property of induction is similar to resistance. It opposes the flow of current in a circuit. So, if there is a change in current, there will be induction or induced EMF to prevent the flow of current or change of current. For an ideal coil, usually this one from the Faraday's law, the magnetic flux is proportional to current. Means the, so we can write the voltage difference, potential difference, d lambda dt. Lambda is the magnetic flux, and unit is waivers or WB. V is the potential difference across the across an inductor. So this lambda is proportional to current I. So we can write lambda equals Li. L the constant of proportionality, or this is the induction. Okay. So if we replace this value of lambda in this equation, we can get V equals d dt of li l is constant di dt so this is the relation between voltage inductors and current okay the voltage across the inductor is directly proportional to the rate of change of currents from here we can see like that and uh, its unit is henry henry means uh, weber per ampere okay it's, it's coming from here so one Henry is equivalent to one volt. 
second part. Okay. How we can calculate the inductance value for a um, material used to build the inductor? So inductance L is n square mu A over what is n? How many turns are there? Okay, number of turns for the inductor, turns of coil. L is the length of the coil. Mu is permeability of the core materials. Okay, just like capacitor, the core materials we use the, in that case, permittivity. But this one, permeability is, is the dielectric constant like that of the core. Okay, and the edge table to get that value. Okay, so this is the formula how we can measure. From here, we can see the inductance is um, is directly proportional to the cross sectional area A of the core and inversely proportional to the length of the length of the coil. Besides, the inductance also proportional to the number, square of the number of turns, which is proportional to the number of turns. More turns, more inductance. More cross-sectional area, more inductance. Longer the length is less, the value. So here to mention, permeability is the measure of the resistance of a material against the formation of magnetic field. So it's uh, like R means resistance. These are the variation of inductors available in the market, the commercial one. Next, let us discuss inductor and capacitor. Inductor and capacitor, both of them can receive the alternating current or direct current. But the characteristic of inductor to block the AC current and allow the DC current to go out. Why? The capacitor block the DC and allow the AC to come out. Okay. On top of that, symbol of Capacitor is C, this one is L. We use the triangular formula, Q equals CV, okay? Or I equals C, dv dt is the same. And inductor L equals potential difference V equals L di dt. This is the relation between voltage, inductors, and resistance. One more, this one, work capacitor work in the electric field, electric domain, whereas inductor work in the magnetic field is save the energy in magnetic field, but capacitor in electric field. Next, transistor. We'll go very fast from here. So transistors are active devices, okay? Active devices, it has three legs, okay? Uh, is differ from the others because the others have two legs. It has three legs, okay, or three connections. What we can say, one is C, C is controller, B is base, E is emitter, E. Two types of transistors are available. One is NPN. NPN means not pointing in. You can see the emitter is giving out, not pointing in, it's out. Another one, pointing in permanently, the NP. You can see the emitter is going in, pointing in. So this is the difference. And due to that, for different, different applications, we have to use different, different um, transistor, either NPN or PNP. NPN also known as N channel, PNP is P channel. Uh, this one, uh, how the semiconductors, it, it, the dif difference is how they are, um, uh, semiconductors are layered, okay, pointing in or going out. Okay, now they they are also divided into 
two types. One is uh, VJT, bipolar junction transistor, and another one, uh, FET. FET is field effect transistor. So bipolar junction transistor are used to amplify the signal. That's why they are active. Okay, collector, emitter, base. But this one useful for motor drivers as a source drain gate. So we can see this one. The P channel means um, P channel is is a P and P eh, pointing in. N channel is NPN. So we can see this one P channel is BJT PNP. This one NP. This one P channel means PNP. Again, this one NP. So how they they are symmetric symbol. Based on that, we can just use one or choose one, which one is more suitable for our applications. Okay, finally, integrated circuits. Another, there are many pins or many leads, not two, not three. So this is integrated circuit or IC, a component with a number of pins and the number of pins can vary from eight to 40 or even more. Okay, this is the full electronic circuit is built inside uh, IC package okay, and connected to pins located around the IC. So this IC has its own functional circuit inside. Okay? Always read the data sheet of the IC in order to find its function and not to damage the circuit. So uh, circuit symbol, uh, schematic symbol, it's like that. This one is a eight pin, eight pin, okay? uh, and this one is also eight pin. Okay, it's something like that. So each each pin is marked that the connection will go to where. So you have to very we have to be very careful, okay, for the uh, connection to set up. They are mostly. Active devices. And another widely used active devices is power source, battery. This can be AC, it can be DC. AC is the socket, like that. Or power outlet uh, from socket in our household appliances is AC. But DC mostly in terms of the battery. Okay. For AC at our house, it can vary from uh, country to country is 110, okay, 120, 220, 230 volt, something like that from main supply yeah, is coming. Or uh, DC is from direct current is coming from the battery. Now, okay, so this is in the DC, this is the DC, but we can use converts the AC to DC also, okay, using the converter. And step down the DC into a low voltage if necessary. So we have to make the circuit for that. So symmetric diagram, this one the DC. Here you can see here two cell. If we write only one big plate, one is one, this one cell. Capacity is very low. Means source uh, capacity is low. Okay. Uh, this also can be used. This one, the polarized capacitor, used to allow which one, which current AC or DC will go. This is the S. This also DC is current. This is in terms of volts or battery. This is the battery. Okay. Now, the conductor. Sometimes we say wire or cable used to connect components components to form a circuit or also used to supply the electric current from source to the destination or household appliances. It must be insulated, otherwise dangerous to use. It may cause fatal injuries. So to insulate this, we use insulator. These are the insulators. So insulators are used to insulate the conductors and also used as dielectric materials for capacitors. 
So rubber, glass, oil, diamond, rayut, all are insulators. Now, conductors can be single stand or multi stand. Single stand inside only one conductor. They are used for experimental purpose to make a circuit, to build a circuit, and especially for temporary use using the breadboard, prototyping and eh? using breadboard. Multi stand used in practice for improved flexibility. So what are the schematic symbol for the conductor? Just one line, appearance like that. And then to connect the conductors from one to another, the cables connection symbol can be like this, if not connected like this, or can be here is a dot. This connector or sometimes node, we say node. A junction okay not connected can be like this this is the newer version newer convention okay insulator we have discussed now since we say that uh, conductors especially the single strand is used to form a prototype or circuit in UG breadboard so let us see how is the breadboard so this is the front view this is the back view there are holes the small small holes so that the uh, OIRs can be inserted and connected very easily. Here, in this board, these the lines, horizontal lines, they are connected. Another one, they are vertical lines, vertical lines, they also are connected. This is to facilitate, to build the circuit in it easily. So now, if we want to build a circuit, we put one register here, connect. Here we connect, so it will be connected. And here one, then if we connect with the battery, okay, one in here, one in there, there will be a circuit. And what is the schematic diagram, okay, or in terms of our circuit diagram or equivalent circuit, what we can say, how it looks like. It looks like this. This is the symbol of the battery, one resistance, another resistance, this one resistance number, so this is the equivalent diagram of this breadboard prototype. So let us come to the summary. We have discussed previous lecture, register, and here capacitor and inductor. These three are widely used to make the circuit of network. They are resistive network, capacitance, capacitor network, and inductor network. So how they look and their symbol. So resistance is like that are inductance L C. Register is a passive device and resists the flow of current to some extent in a circuit. Why inductors uh, store the energy in magnetic domain and capacitor stores the energy in electric domain. Both of the both of them store energy but they do one function they can accept both ac and dc current but inductor allow only dc current to go out whereas capacitor allow only the ac current so we can use those as for our need now how is the voltage current and resistance inductance or capacitance relationship. For resistors, it follow Ohm's law, V equals IR, whereas capacitor, Q equals CV, inductor, L, T, I, D, T. Okay, how they are um, uh, different. These are the fundamental formulas. Okay, in our next class, our next lesson, we will discuss about the circuits. Circuits can be parallel or series. It can be uh, resistive circuits, capacitive circuits, or inductor circuits. So that's what we'll discuss in the last class. So stay tuned. Thank you for watching. Bye.